Hey, it's Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here, and welcome back to another episode. Today, we're gonna delve deeper into the battery recycling process. And I've gotta say, the more I find out about this topic, the more I realize just how misunderstood it really is. To give us a deeper insight, I have a Jarko from American Manganese, which specialize in the battery recycling process. So let's get him on and pick his brain. So Jarko, welcome to the show. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about what your company does? Yeah, our company is American Manganese and we have our patented recyclable process for recycling lithium-ion battery material. Our focus is on the cathode material and we've achieved up to 100% recovery of lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt and aluminum. And uh, we produce a high purity product that uh, we hope to reintegrate into remanufacturing of uh, new lithium ion batteries. Okay, great. Just some background. When I interviewed Chris Reed from Neo Metals, he mentioned that Tesla was getting their batteries recycled at Kinspersky Brothers. Who the heck are they? I don't know much about them, so this is why I'm gonna ask Jarko to give us some more info about them. So I'm just wondering if you've heard of Kinspersky Brothers and are they currently recycling Tesla's batteries? So I've, I've seen some of those reports. I have heard of them. Um, I think they've been around for, for many years and just even from recycling, you know, lead acid batteries. When it, when it comes to understanding if they are recycling Tesla cells, it, it's, it's questionable in terms of what you mean by recycling. Um, from what I'm familiar with some processes, and I mean, you can quote me on it. I, I, I don't have an insight on every company. Um, but I believe it's more of a, a shredding process to almost just destroy the battery into a slag or a powder. Um, and then that's shipped th for further refining, whether that's in a smelting operation or, or some other hydrometallurgical process and, and more so maybe focus on recovering, um, you know, cobalt primarily. So let's unpack what Jarko said here, because there's a lot of fine details which can easily be missed. First of all, from what I understand, battery recycling is not all the same. From what I know, there are two different processes. The first of which is pyrometallurgy, which consists of burning batteries in a very energy intensive way, not to mention toxic waste byproducts are produced while only getting back low to medium amounts of cobalt. Hydrometallurgy, on the other hand, is a lot less energy intensive and doesn't produce the toxic waste byproducts. And all the major raw materials can be recovered. This involves the use of acids and solutions to extract the raw battery materials. Which is what Jarko specializes, along with his company, American Manganese. So when you hear about battery recycling going forward, find out what they actually mean. Are they actually getting back the raw materials or not? Are they just putting it into a furnace? These are the sort of questions that we have to ask. And I didn't even know about these distinctions prior to interviewing Chris and now Jarko. Do you have any um, predictions for battery day in terms of what Tesla may announce in terms of recycling? I don't know. I, I hope they actually even mention recycling. Hmm. Uh, it's, uh, like I was mentioning to you, it, it seems like, a, like an afterthought for many of these uh, different topics that are discussed. Uh, you know, cells keep being made, there's constant talks about new technologies, uh, going through those different hype cycles. But, you know, I hope, I hope there's a mention of recycling and there's some kind of initiative on that. Um, I, I noticed in, in Tesla's 2019 impact report that just came out, uh, they had a recycling portion and one, one line that really stuck out to me is, you know, a majority, you know, not exact quote, but something like a majority of the material that's sent for recycling is from R and D or quality control. So wow. it's on it's on that same thing I was telling you with manufacturing waste. There's a lot of waste out there prior to it even going into the car. And even from Tesla's report, I mean, I think that was kind of like a all right, you know, I I, I think we're kind of right here on where this waste is coming from. And a lot of it is is that R and D and quality control. And, you know, who knows how big those numbers are, but it's obviously a, a significant place to start uh, with, with the recycling technology and proving it out. This is the other massive takeaway. Battery recycling is not about spent automotive EV batteries. 
10 years ago, Tesla only produced and sold the Roadster, 2,450 to be exact. I mean, it won't be for another 5 to 10 years until significant amounts of automotive batteries start to come back for recycling. And then, what happens when Tesla unveiled a million mile battery? They're not going to be coming back in a hurry. So what is battery recycling all about then? It's faulty cells at the battery cell plants. Right now, there is a surge in battery plants popping up across the globe, and new plants can have up to 30% failure rates during their commissioning stages. So this is where the potential and business case for battery recycling comes in. I mean, why would cell manufacturers pay to dispose faulty cells and then pay to get numerous raw materials shipped from all over the globe to make new cells, when you can simply recycle faulty cells on site and be your own supplier of raw materials. I mean, think about it. Okay, so I'm just thinking from your point of view, would you be looking more towards say cell manufacturers and the rise of all the new battery plants that are gonna have to open up over say the next 10 years? Yeah, so um, I, I would say for us and where we started with like our pilophon testing is on that um, cathode scrap and coming from these manufacturers and so that the post-consumer, you know, end of life EV batteries. Um, and, you know, from, and actually, I think, you know, I, that's a great strategy for us, uh, you know, licensing agreement or joint venture where we're working together uh, through, through some kind of partnership with, with these uh, manufacturers. Um, and we've actually even, so following our pilot plant testing, which we did majority of 2019, uh, you know, recycling was starting to get a lot of attention and, and the benefits of recycling waste. And we actually uh, started sampling some material from two, two tier one battery manufacturers, um, which sent us their sample waste, similar to what we've received prior to um, with our pilot plant. But now it's a more uh, direct relationship with these manufacturers. And, and we've, we've produced, you know, our, our precursor cathode materials. Uh, we've, we've shipped that back to them. For their analysis and i mean and that that relationship is still ongoing so you know ideally that that is a strong partner to have they, they are you know if you look at it from they are the feedstock and they are the buyer um or if you have a licensing agreement that's something you a plant that you would co-locate and and help you know direct any of your waste material back through a process and, and recover as much as you can and i mean you know tesla is a hot topic and i, I think i even saw reports a um, long time ago as well where the gigafactories always had the intention of incorporating some kind of a recycling facility because they're all about vertical integration right mm. and if, if they can do everything there on site um, so why do you think they haven't incorporated recycling yet on site um it's right now in terms of kind of what's what's commercial I'd say, you know, we're, we're expanding into commercial and, um, you know, we, we hope we could, we could find that opportunity with them and, and share our technology. Um, and I, and I think like right now the volume is picking up. So maybe before it wasn't something that was much of a concern. Um, maybe it was just something that we need to get rid of for the time being. Um, but we, you know, I, I, th the, I think the plan was always there that, recycling will be incorporated and from what i understand from the impact reports you know working with like third parties uh, i don't know if they're working developing on their own or how redwood materials plays a part in that mm. and the other thing that i can't seem to understand is why would they like why would jb struble set up redwood materials to work on battery recycling why wouldn't they just do it in-house at tesla That's a good, that's a, I don't know, that's a, I'm going to have to get him on the channel next because I'd love, <laughs> if, they, if they were doing something, I mean, you know, who knows, they, they, they could have maybe been developing something in-house for a long time and, and this is like a, a spin-off, but I, I don't know to what level that would be or, um, you know, anything, I mean, even if I knew anything to disclose on that. Okay, so Jarko, look. Thanks again for being on the show. Really appreciate all the info that you were able to share with us. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time and listening to battery recycling, um, you know, and, and really looking forward into the future and 
the EV revolution. So I hope you guys liked that video, and now I need your feedback. Do you want me to get Jarko back on the show to cover all the key steps of how battery recycling process is done in depth? Let me know in the comments below. So to conclude, a big shout out to Connecting the Dots, Gregor, and Develation, along with all our other Patreons. Your support is allowing me to grow the channel and create lots more unique content, so a big thank you.